Alright, this will be the last video for tonight. Um, I'm going to show my helmet collection. All the helmets that I, that I usually have sitting out. So I'm going to start off with this one. Uh, this is a Swedish model 1918, I think. It is a post-war refurb, I think. No, wartime ones would have, this piece would go from here to here and all around. But after the war, they refurbished them, I guess, and they just put in new liner bands without it. It's kind of like a, uh, a weird style of helmet. So then we have, I think, a Polish or some some Eastern Bloc style Russian helmet. It's seen some sort of use. Named right there and right there. I think it was made in 1955, so it's not wartime. And here's a uh, Israeli IDF, the Israeli Defense Forces uh, helmet with the Viet the uh, Vietnam U.S. Airborne hel uh, liner in it. We have to tell if it's an airborne liner. Is this triangular piece right here and with this cell's chin strap? Here's a uh, Regular ground troops, Vietnam, U.S. Ar uh, US Army, Marines, or Rangers, whatever. It has a Korean War helmet liner in it. And the helmet shell itself is a uh, late World War II one. So, I paid 70 for it. No, not 70, I paid 40 for it. Um, like if you pay 40 for one like this, that's complete. Uh, then you could probably get it. But if you wanted to sell it, you could probably get it for nine. You could probably sell it for 90. But what happens with this? This one actually was a fireman's helmet for the Navy in the Korean War. And then when Vietnam came around, it was given to the armed uh, to the Army or Marines, and then it was repainted green. This is a. Uh, World War II front seam, front seam swivel bale. Um, I did find a name in this one, and I had a, I had a friend help me find the person that it belonged to. Uh, he is no longer alive, I think, if I remember correctly. And then the liner is something I bought separate at a gun show before I even bought this. There was an emblem here, as you can see how it shines, and then here it doesn't shine. So whatever was here is gone. And then here's another front seam, so uh, non silver bell. And it's just it's just a beater helmet that I picked up for like ten dollars. So here's another Vietnam War re, uh, World War Two issue reissue uh, helmet. It is a rear seam, 1944 made shell. Winter has seen better days. Everything's just so stiff and brittle in here, so I don't really try to blow it out. Then some soldier uh, wrote "Death Before Dishonor," which is, a, I think, strictly a Marine thing, from my from what my brother told me. So uh, here's my named M40 single deal, uh, single decal Wehrmacht helmet. Doesn't oh shit. <laughs> it does not have a liner. Um, liner band insists that the date on the liner band says I think 1941, so just after, just a couple of years after uh, the war started. No damage to the helmet. Here's a relic M39. Not M39, uh, M35. Uh, grave marker helmet. You can see right there. This would have been nailed into a cross after the guy died, right there. And then over time, rust would eat away around the nail. So, I have no idea where this was found. So, uh, it was just, I found it in my uncle's shed. And it was repainted apple green and then had some poorly drawn swastikas right there and right there so I just use I use uh, military grade aircraft paint stripper got it all off 
I can still see some original paint on that. It was this color, or a lighter color of that. And then, no, this is not a Kevlar. This is actually a Kevlar helmet cover that it came with one of the helmets that I have. Um, I just put like an 80, I put an 80s production uh, M1 helmet in there. Like, but the helmet that's in here was made before they adopted the Kevlar helmet. So, this liner is a uh, Vietnam era. The helmet is from, I think, like 1982 or 1983. So, either, either this is uh, shrap metal damage or something, or this is a moth damage, I don't know. Oh, it looks like shrap metal damage. So, that's about it. I'm going to cut this off here, so I'll see you guys later.